A nation where talks writes election results for professors to announce will always produce governors and presidents with questionable credentials and uncertified certificates. To work in most private sectors in Nigeria, one must not only be below 25 years with three to four years working experience, he or she must also have a second class upper degree, what you call 2 1 in the university. But to become a member of the State House of Assembly, a governor, a member of the Federal House of Representatives, a senator, or even the president of the same country, the only educational qualification you require is school sets or its equivalent. That's section 106, section 177, section 65, and section 131 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. If you are still wondering why we have a president, governors, deputy governors, lawmakers, and even party chairman whose certificate or credentials are questionable, then wait for the meaning of its equivalent. As defined by our laws in section 318 of the 1999 Constitution, its equivalent means anybody who can read and write in the opinion of the National Independent Electoral Commission, INEC. What a country. When the president was asked for a certificate between 2015 and 2019, rather than allow him to either present same or give a reasonable explanation otherwise, willers and hailers were at each other's throat. As the request got lost in the shout of many of their voices, some even asked him to present tissue paper as certificates until the Supreme Court eventually came to his rescue. Same thing happened during Oshomole's tenure as governor when he was asked to produce his certificate. Those asking for a certificate today said then, that since he could speak impeccable English, his certificate was unnecessary. I don't even want to go to Tinubu's Chicago or Salisu Buhari's Toronto, as Dino Melai had to conduct his graduation at the National Assembly with a convocation gown to show that he graduated from ABU Zaria. I would learn it was after seven years for a four-year course. Obasanjo accused Goodluck Jonathan of not completing his PhD. I don't know about that one. Or... Ayo Fayoshi, former governor of Ekiti State, claimed to have attended the Badampoli, but the institution is still trying to locate his name in their books. Maybe they should ask Gogo. Okay. Stella Oduas claim of obtaining a master's degree in St. Paul's College, Lawrenceville, in Virginia, USA, in 1983 is still a subject of controversy. No wonder many of them no longer parade these Oyibo certificates. The certificate of Senator Ademola Adeleke in Oshun governorship election is most laughable. APC and Bayesa deputy governorship candidate is still very fresh in our mind. I wonder if David Lyon and his supporters will ever forgive that guy. How many of us remember Evans or is it Evan, Ewerem now, God rest his soul? The list is endless. And now, the current governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, or is he Obasek? Just like in 2016, he's also emerged in certificate scandal. And in all the cacophony of voices for and against him, the governor, typically of our politicians, is yet to take our time to explain to Nigerians what led to the discrepancies in his certificate. Rather, he has left the weighty matters to be chasing the shadows of passive enemy. It can only happen in Nigeria. If it is true that this certificate of these politicians are actually 40, then those who impose him on the state in 2016 should be prosecuted. The question to our politician is, why are there always irreconcilable differences in their certificates? According to the provisions of Section 465 of the Criminal Code, a person who makes a false document or writing, knowing it to be false, and with intent that it may, or it may be used or acted upon as genuine, whether in the state or anywhere, is said to have forged the document in writing. But how many of these politicians have we prosecuted? Another jam questions for you. But the most interesting and ironic part of this whole Edo State election saga is that the PDP, who have called Obasaki names and claim he doesn't have a certificate and have consistently scored him low in terms of performance since 2016, are now welcoming him with open arms. While on the flip side, the APC that crucified Isaiah in 2016 and called him unprintable names, including the one decency won't allow me to mention here, are today calling him a political messiah. Ah! Nigerian politicians, even the devil go every now. Anyway, the campaigns and debates, if any, will be interesting. My advocacy today would be, until the people realize that development and growth in any society is a product of good followership, who are confident to question their leaders and consistently condemn to order using their tomb and other legal means, Nigeria will continue to have rulers whose integrity and certificate are not only questionable, but irreconcilable, uncertified certificate. I beg second base, Jerry.